Hi everyone, and this is the final, rather delayed uh, part of my Warwick Kingmaker um, series of videos, where I actually uh, went along and I just logged what I was doing to how I created the Kingmaker. So part one was about how I converted him uh, and then built essentially all the troops. But the second part was how I painted this rather complex coat of arms and the other men on here and this part is going to focus on how I'm going to base him um, so these are just on with uh, with blue tack at the moment and uh, this isn't any kind of finalized positioning so essentially what I thought I would do is just keep the camera running as I as I come on to do some basing uh, and then cut between um, sort of drying times and just show you how I go about it so for this one i've got quite a few ideas but obviously i'm not going to be able to do everything now um let's grab my my pencil which is what i always use um, i'm going to be using this large base as i've said before to create the command base the diorama and i've got a, a rough idea of, of what i want it to look like now front and center we want to have warwick so he's certainly going to have to be in this front area sort of here um, I quite like the idea of having these men with the smaller banners off to the side, maybe, I don't know, maybe they could be on a track or something. Um, his coat of arms here, this would be closer to him as would the standard. And then we've also got his brother, George Neville, over here and uh, the dog. So we've got quite a few parts. So the main thing is I can't make the base too over complicated because otherwise it's just going to be all over the place. So what I think I'll do is we'll remove these figures off of the base, leaving all these lovely little bits of blue tack on here. Um, and we'll have a go at actually just drawing and planning something out. Okay, so when it comes to doing my command bases and dioramas, I do like to do a bit of planning on the base, just so I can get a rough idea of how I'm gonna set things out. Now, I've already said that I want Warwick front and center, and he's gonna have his uh, his little minion, Rotusly, with him who's pointing the way, so I need something, sort of an area that's gonna be, if not higher, more prominent without any kind of terrain features in it, sort of at the front. Maybe there's like a ridge that they're looking at as they come over. Um, I wanted those troops sort of stationed over here, so maybe, maybe we could have a track or something sort of in this area here. His brother and the dogs um, would really do well being sort of on equal ground but further back, so maybe something over here, um, and then there's uh, some extra troops with his standard maybe there so maybe we have some lower ground in there so you have high ground this and this is just going to be my way of mapping things out with modeling compound uh, maybe here we do maybe we have a like a, a dirt track a dirt track and gully and then you've got like the because you've got like the sloppy mud part here and here we've got sort of that central grassy bit. So we can have some troops sort of in here. So if it's, we have Warwick and Rotusly, his brother and his attendant over here. But that would look quite cool because you can have the, the dog snuffling around on the, uh, the slightly lower ground maybe. Put his banner. Then at the back have his standard. On this road, you can have them almost moving or marching, sort of like this, maybe. Hang on, if I swap these two round, yeah, that looks quite cool. And then there'll be a bit of a gap there, so I could always pull this guy over to here. Maybe pull the dog over like that, and then we'd actually have a bit more room. So we've actually still got our distinct groups. Best thing to do now, I think, is to build up the base. Now, the way I'm going to do that is I'm going to use modeling compound um, and just build up some forms, make some areas a little higher than others. Um, and then we can look at getting some models stuck down. 
Okay, so as I said, I used a modeling compound from uh, Geek Gaming, and I use this stuff quite a lot, to be fair. Um, it's meant for terrain making, I think, but I tend to use it for building up bases and, and doing all sorts of, of stuff. So I'm going to put two spoonfuls of this oh, into this, this mixing pot that I've liberated from one of my daughters when they finished eating the fruit pot. And then I'm just going to add water to this. So I always tend to do this in sections because it's just a little bit easier. Okay, so I've got my rough ground form complete. So as you can see, we've got the basis of a trackway over here. Now this kind of weird donut, um, I'm gonna work this up and see how it, how it works out. Now, once this stuff goes off, and it goes off in about 10 minutes, I'll be able to smooth it out. This area at the front where the, all those, fig, the main sort of, if you like, subjects of the, uh, the base are going to be we need to flatten that out and then what we can do is once this is dry we can then peel off and crack off any of the bits that we uh, we don't need so i'm going to leave that there i'm going to let that cure and then i'll come back to you when this is dry okay so as you can see this is all dry now um, and I've smoothed it off as it was drying and got rid of some of the other gribbly bits as well and this is going to be sort of like the base work that everything they're going to be creating so just to give you a, a rough idea you know we can have I've left this gap here on the road big enough that I can actually get these pudding bases in these can obviously be trimmed down a little bit which is probably what I'll end up doing um, but we're already onto something which should look quite cool when it's done right the next thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna pop this on this large cork thing which I use for a holder when I'm doing bases Ooh. there we go and get that nice and flat and now I'm going to use um, DIY paint so well say DIY paint paint you know like the type that you'd you know decorate your walls with because it's cheap and you can get it in quite big tubs and I'm going to use that to create all of the base color across all of this um, and then once that is dry I'll fix on the first set of models paint their bases with the same color and then work and work on them in little groups so I'm gonna get all of this covered and then when that's dry we'll come back Right, so there is the base. Now it's all uh, got the undercoat on it. Um, you might have to put on a couple of coats of this stuff because you can see it sort of chips away. But to be fair, I'm going to be putting so many different sort of ground coverings and materials on this that will go. Um, so what I'm going to do now, um, I'll show you guys very quickly. I'm going to apply the miniatures, um, but I'm going to do it in sections. So I'm going to have the group who are on the road, I'm going to apply those here. Then I'm going to basically paint their bases their pudding bases this color so it all starts to mix in then I'll do the guys at the back here and so on and so forth and then start to build up the ground covers which we do in sections so I'll, I'll stick these ones on so you can see what I mean um, and then um, what I'll do I'll get those painted and then we'll I'll get them all stuck on and I'll show you how it how it's looking after that okay so here we are these are the first grouping that I've put on here and they are marching down the road so as I said, you can always, you know, get rid of this stuff quite easily. And that's what I've done here just to allow positioning of the models. I also clipped down the pudding bases as well so that they would they would fit in. Um, as you can see, I then just paint the uh, the pudding bases uh, brown and, uh, and then that's what I'm going to do all over it. So I'll now add on probably the grouping at the back, get those uh, painted, um, the pudding bases, and at the front as well, and then go onto the ground covers. So what I'll do is I'll update again once I've got all the models on here and they're all ready to, uh, to start getting the ground covers on. Okay, 
there we have it. So this is the, the final layout for uh, how all of the figures are going on Warwick's base. And um, I've got all of the uh, sort of undercoating done. So there we go. It's taken a while to actually figure out how I wanted these. Um, but I quite like the gap I've got in the middle, especially with the dogs sort of snuffling around. So I'll be able to actually, you know, probably put a hedge or something interesting in there. Maybe even some water effect as well. But there we go. There is, there is the layout. So... What I'm going to do now, I'm going to get on and put my ground cover down. Now the ground cover will primarily be on sort of the three quarters of the base on this side, um, where these guys are walking down the track. That's actually going to be muddy, so I'll be using a Vallejo texture paste on that, but I don't put that on until the very, very end. So what I'll do is I'll get all of the ground covers on, and um, then we'll come back when that's dry, um, and then we'll start adding things like static grass. Right, so the ground covers are on and they're basically dry now, so there you can see essentially how I lay it all out. Um, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to be using static grass applicator and I'm going to be putting on a, a main layer of this, which is 4 mil summer grass. Um, I can't remember where I got this from, is it World War Scenics? I can't remember, I seem to have a lot of static grasses. Um, so this will be my first layer and then what I'll be doing once that's on and dried, I'll be adding a sort of a highlight of this dead grass mix um, on top of that. So we'll get a nice, you know, nice two tones on there. Um, I'm going to put the static grass primarily over this area and I'll be leaving some patches in there so we can have some undergrowth. And also I'll run it down the center of the road there. So might as well get cracking. Okay, so the static grass is now all dried and this is where we are. We're now in a position I can start adding on the tufts and getting everything just how I want it to be. So start adding the little details, which is my favorite part of this. I still haven't added the um, wet mud effect. That will go on last, as I say, because then you can mix in bits of the static grass and it looks all sloppy and it, yeah, it works a lot better. So what I'm going to now use are various sort of leaves. They've got these ones here from uh, which are the gamers grass uh, laser cut leaves. Um, bits of smushed up wood and I've got plenty of tufts from Tajima 1. Um, I suppose the thing on here is going to be trying really really hard not to um, not to overdo it too much because there's already a lot going on on this base and um, I just I don't want to um, make it too busy or busier than it already is so what we're looking for is just something nice and realistic and we have this tub here I think you guys have seen me talk about this before this is a tub I don't know why there's a leaf in there um, this tub here is one that I throw all of my static grass and flock and everything that's um, about to be thrown out I always throw it in here so the mix is never the same um, but this is what I use for sort of just weeds and um, you know just small ferns things like that and it make, makes things a little bit more interesting on the base so I'll be getting some of that on there. So what I'll do is I'll get all of that down um, and then I'll probably get the wet mud on as well and then we'll come back and we'll basically be pretty much there. Okay, thank you for sticking with me and as you can see the base is now complete. Um, I've used the Tajima 1 tufts and I've sort of filled in around the people on the base where uh, where needed and uh, I've also used these laser cut uh, grasses from Gamers Grass just to uh, you know just spruce it up a little bit more I've then used the, uh, the sort of the weed mixture as it were um, and I've just scattered that in a few places around the base added some moorland elements onto here those are the large ones you saw and then small bushes and then I've also added a bit of a water feature just basically like a, a small puddle by the side of the road and that's what you know the dogs are snuffling around um, and then from this side you can see we've got the troops that are marching past like he's giving orders rotously here trying to tell him something um, Warwick probably ignoring it and sending these men off in another direction while his standard bearer looks on and in the background we have his brother George Neville who's uh, probably looking on I would say disapprovingly but uh, he probably supported everything he did anyway what I'm gonna do I'm gonna chuck this on the turntable and then we'll have a look and sum up okay everybody so 
here he is. This is Richard Neville, the 16th Earl of Warwick, a man that history remembers as the Kingmaker. And I'm really, really pleased with how this has turned out. I was getting a bit worried at one point that the base wasn't going to come together. However, until you get the, the grass on there, that's really the moment I think that things actually start to look in your mind's eye like, yes, this is the way that I actually want it. So when I started creating this about two months ago, I had loads of help and you guys really, really helped me um, bring this together because originally you know, I had the idea about putting a cannon on there or casualties and so it's always good to get feedback so thank you to everybody who commented and thank you to everyone who's taken the time to watch these videos. Not every command base I create is this big, most of them are on 60mm rounds for the uh, general commanders and captains of the Wars of the Roses, however Warwick being Warwick I felt that he did need something bigger, he is such a large character in the Wars of the Roses and in the whole dynastic struggle that I really did feel that this sort of needed needed to be something imposing. Uh, Robin, who I played the games with, uh, came up with a very good analogy actually that essentially he's almost like a bit of a mafia boss and these are his cronies um, that he's off ordering um, them what to do and that is actually a very very good um, comparison when you look at how many of the families that the Neville's managed to weave themselves into and you can just look at how many um, estates and earldoms and landed titles um, that Warwick himself had just by the coat of arms that he's got which again is incredibly complicated. Anyway, I'm not going to bang on about that. That would be a, that would be another video if we ever do one for the history of the Earl of Warwick because that will go on for a long time. Anyway, I hope you guys like the uh, like the finished product. As um, I say, it wasn't a complete tutorial, um, so it's just more of a bit of a step by step. But um, I'll leave links in the description to uh, the various products that I've used um, and where you can go and find those, and and also um, links to the flags on um, on eBay for Pete's flags. Um, otherwise, what I'll do is what I always do. I'll leave up some pictures. Um, and you'll hopefully see this chap in a battle report very, very soon. As for what's coming next for the Wars of the Roses, I'll be taking a break for a little while. I've completed the majority of my Kingmaker project now. Um, there are a couple of stragglers left to do. Um, however, I've done 16 individual units. That includes cannons, a lot of bill and bow, foot knights. Um, we've even got the, the papal legate. So I have a complete army for, for Warwick. And that can go with my army for Edward and I can either field them side by side and have uh, 32 units on the board plus um, quite a lot of extra stuff or I can have a decent sized game um, and pretty much refight Barnet just missing a couple of Lancastrians so the Lancastrians will get a look in in the next part of this ongoing Wars of the Roses saga however when that will be I'm not too sure there will still be plenty of Wars of the Roses content on the channel so don't worry I've still got plenty of histories that I want to do there will be battle reports as to campaigns and there's going to be some updates for the adaptation as well so do stick around and keep your eyes open for that but for the moment this will be where the Kingmaker project this part of it will end so if you've been with me over the last I can't remember how long it is now 14 months that I've been working on this then thank you very very much um, if you're new to the channel because I've seen uh, that there's been quite a few subscribers recently thank you very much welcome I hope you enjoy this be sure to check out the other videos and um, enjoy the pictures and I'll see you guys all again soon take care Thank you.